All right, folks. So in today's video, what we're going to do is take a look at this Retivis RA86. It's a GMRS mobile radio. We're going to connect it to a Siglent spectrum analyzer, and we're going to take a look and see if it has any uh, spurious emissions or harmonics that come out when you transmit and basically look at the spectral purity of the radio. Now, what I did want to say is that Retivis did send this radio to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person that doesn't like sponsored videos, what I would suggest is you go watch some cat videos. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we have our radio connected up to our Siglent Spectrum Analyzer, and I'll roll a picture of that in right now. And you can see the output of the radio goes through an attenuator. It's a 40 watt attenuator that we've adjusted for in the spectrum analyzer. And then it goes right into the spectrum analyzer's 50 ohm impedance input. Now what I want to do is I want to key this up on the channel 1, which is rated at 5 watts of output. And we should be able to see if there's any harmonics or spurious emissions that are transmitted as well. When we take a look at our setup here, we start at 250 megahertz and span all the way up to 1.5 gigahertz. That would encompass any third harmonics coming off of our fundamental signal. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is key up the microphone. So when I key up, you can see in our table below the spectrograph that uh, you can see that we have a peak, a single peak, and it is at 463.33 megahertz. And that's likely due to resolution. That's not the exact transmit frequency. So we'll zoom in on that so we can see that a little bit better. But what it's showing us is an amplitude of 6.68 watts. And that's because we're not dealing with any losses in coaxial cable. And we're not dealing with any SWR issues reflecting some of that power back to us. But what you can also see is there's no spurious emissions or harmonics being detected by the spectrum analyzer. Now what I'm going to do is come back and zoom in on this signal and we'll get a better look at it. Okay, so what we've done is adjusted our center frequency for 462.56 megahertz. And then we adjusted our span for 100 kilohertz, or kilocycles as sometimes they're called. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to key up and then we can see our signal there. Let me go ahead and pause this because we are getting a little bit of jumping around. And you can see we are at 6.28 watts. And we have a relatively clean FM modulated signal. There's a little bit of a better shot of that. So it looks pretty good. What I want to do now is I'm going to switch over to a high power channel and we're going to do another capture. Okay, we've adjusted our center frequency to 462.725. And we've kept our span at 100 kilohertz. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to key up and then you can see our signal there. So let me go ahead and pause that. There you go, and you can see that our signal is around 13.72 watts, and it looks like a well-defined FM modulated signal. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust the span so we can see if we have any harmonics on this frequency. So what we've done now is we've adjusted our center frequency to 857 megahertz. Our start is 250 megahertz, and our stop is 1.5 gigahertz. And then when I key up, you can see in the peak table that we have a signal that is rating around 13.37, uh, I'm sorry, 3.37 watts, and we have no harmonics or spurious emissions. So this radio is pretty clean, and I'm pretty happy with what we're seeing. All right, folks, and with that, I'm going to say that we uh, are going to give this radio a pass in terms of spectral purity. I'd like to thank Retivas for sending this to me for my consideration. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching.